but we applaud the Greens for at least making constructive Sergeant proposals. Sergeant, the Honourable Member, his time has expired. Um, I call uh, David Seymour. Well, what I take from that, Mr Speaker, is the Labor Party doesn't really support this bill uh, at all, uh, because they didn't talk about it at all. Uh, Mr Speaker, I've recently heard from some medical experts who have found a cure for voting for the Green Party, and it's called economic literacy. Because every time you get a bill from the Green Party, and particularly from Gareth Hughes, it is economically illiterate. Last time he brought a bill to this House, it was to set the price, set feed-in tariffs for solar electricity. And as it was explained in the House at that time, Mr Speaker, there's two ways to set a price wrong, too low or too high. Either way, you either alienate producers or consumers from the market and end up with less of what you actually want. This particular bill has even more economic problems even than that one. And one of the most simple problems is who will it benefit? Kui Bono. Well, people who will benefit most from this bill are people that have the largest student loans. Probably the people, statistically and sadly, who went to the best schools and then got the most subsidies when they were at university. And now the Green Party, the champion of the poor, the friend of the working man, wants to give even more taxpayer dollars in the forms of subsidies to some of the most privileged people in New Zealand society to get on the home ladder. What about all the working class and poor people who haven't had the benefit of a tertiary education and can't benefit from this particular scheme? What is wrong with the world when the ACT Party has to stand up for the working man because the Green Party can't do it and the Labour Party didn't mention them either? Mr Speaker, not only is it privileging, but to a large extent it is self-defeating. Because even though these people are going to get some measure of taxpayer money paying the interest on their loan while they're saving for their mortgage, what they're going to discover, and this is the kicker for people who think that there might be something in it for them, well, what they're going to discover is that when they go to the bank to get a mortgage, the first thing the bank's going to ask is, do you still have a student loan? And if the answer is yes, then they are going to be so much more demanding on the terms of borrowing and the interest rate that can be secured. This is what I mean by economic literacy in the Green Party, Mr Speaker. They, even when they try to help people, even when they try to help the wrong people, they can't figure out how the economics actually work. But I do want to say something about the structure of the housing market, and I regret that Phil Twyford beat me to it because the former Australian Prime Minister, Paul Keating, in his lovely Australian politician way, said that allowing people to put more of their savings and creating policies that encourage young people to put more of their equity into the housing market was ripping the backside out of Australian public policy. And the National Party sadly have done that with Homestart, making people put more of their superannuation savings into a housing market they think is overheated. And yet this bill is more of exactly that. It leaves people in a position where their net amount of debt in the housing market is greater than it would have been had they focused on paying off their student loan first. We're actually subsidising people to be in a worse financial position and more dependent upon a housing market that is overheated than they would be otherwise. Mr Speaker, this bill is a failure on so many accounts. It tries to help the wrong people, it's self-defeating in trying to help them, but it's worse than that because there are real structural problems with the housing market. And as we heard from Phil Twyford, and we hear frequently from the Minister of Building and Housing or Housing or Social Housing or whatever Nick Smith is these days, it is the restrictions upon land that you're allowed to build upon put in place by restrictive land use planning that has driven up the price of housing for my generation, for millennials, for generation X and Y, whoever we're calling ourselves these days, and I'm sorry to hear, Mr Speaker, that you're not one of us. It did come as a bit of a surprise. Uh, the fact of the matter is that it is the kinds of land use restriction and urban planning that has driven up house prices in every western city that has tried them. And which party, which party in this House is most in favour of smart growth, urban density, urban containment and the kinds of restrictions that have pushed up the price of housing for a whole generation? Can you believe it? It is the economic illiterates in the Green Party. So, Mr Speaker, the ACT Party proudly opposes this bill. It is inequitable. It is ineffective. 
and it misses the real structural problems in the housing market which need to be addressed and which the Green Party is not only the last party to address but actually has an ideology that makes it worse. I really hope that Gareth Hughes doesn't get a bill drawn again because Order. it can't possibly be worse than this. Expired. Thank you. Yeah. I call Grant. Mr Speaker, well that's um, quite rich, isn't it? Um, a lecture on economic illiteracy.